explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are talking about Windows Sandbox. And if you remember this view, then you have probably watched my channel for more than two years. Thank you. <laughs> but this is my Windows system and I haven't used it for a long time now. So it's a bit clutter and a little bit, yeah, strange. Um, it crashed a lot <laughs> when I started it. So I think I had it running for a couple of hours, then it crashed and then I had it for another couple of hours and it crashed again. So it's not really reliable. Hopefully we can uh, record this one. So let's switch over here. A totally new screen for me. So I'm down here. Uh, but here we see the Windows Sandbox. And this is a very interesting feature in Windows. It's the same Windows that we have installed in the system. It's just sandboxed. So it's similar to Docker containers and similar things. So you're using the same channels, you're using the same libraries, you're using somewhat the same memory, but it's shielded from the rest of the system. So this is a part of Windows, but it's uh, in a way where you can feel safe to run malicious software and similar things. So it's a really good tool to use. Um, so I wanted to talk about how to set this up. If we turn this off, then first off, you need to go into your settings and under settings, you should have applications and applications should have system components. And then under system components, you have, uh, I think apps and features, uh, programs and features. Yeah, so you, you should get to this screen. And this is pretty much the old interface. And I'm not sure why they are hiding all the good functionality in the old interface. And the new interface is just, yeah, annoying to get through to actually get to the real stuff. But that's the way Windows do it. Uh, so you go into this turn on and off Windows features. So if we click up that, so we get this glorious little uh, check um, box menu here. Here you have a bunch of different features. One thing you need to do is have Hyper-V or similar functionality so you can actually run in a um, virtualized way in your BIOS. I'm not gonna go through that. Should be fairly easy to find in most BIOSes. But when you have that, you of course need to turn on Hyper-V here as well. I've turned on both of these, Hyper-V Management Tool and Hyper-V Platform. And then we need to turn on the, uh, let's see here, Virtual Machine Platform and the Hyper uh, Microsoft Hypervisor Platform. And then you have Windows Sandbox. And I tried to get this to work and of course it did not work. Uh, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, so that was the steps that I was told should work in order to get this to work. The extra step that I needed to do was go into a, power, a Windows PowerShell that is uh, in administrator mode, so you can run any command. And then you have this bcd edit. And if you run that slash set, and then you have this option down here, hypervisor launch type. Uh, and that is how the hypervisor should launch on uh, startup. And you set that to auto. Then you should be able to get the hypervisor to start when Windows starts up. And when that is done, you should be able to run this uh, Windows Sandbox. So if we look in the menu here, we go in, down to Windows Sandbox, start that up. It takes a while for it to start. It's not the fastest process, but then you have pretty much a fully running Windows environment where everything is shielded. And you see here that it's very minimal. It has the old interface and then you also have no extra application running here. No way virus uh, scanning at all, for instance. That is a huge thing. Because let's say that you have the Windows Sandbox and then someone comes in and 
uploads a binary package that could be uh, extra extracted using a file and then configures the configuration file for Windows Sandbox to start up with that directory uh, mounted to the sandbox and then runs the, un, uh, the tool to extract the binary file on startup and then uh, uses that in order to start up some malicious software in the sandbox and also starts the sandbox as a different user so it ends up in the background and you never see it on your Windows machine then you would have something that is running on your machine and can do pretty much anything because no antivirus have found it. Well, of course, uh, Mirrorface in uh, China has been reported to have done just that. Um, so that is pretty much it <laughs> in this video. It's a, a really neat feature that nobody should use or something. Um, no, you can use it for banking applications or others that you don't want to have logged, but you need to know the caveat that it could be a security risk until Microsoft finds a solution for this. So this was uh, reported, I believe, in middle of April. So Microsoft should have solved this this year, hopefully. Uh, but Keep that in mind, it's a great tool, but with great power comes great responsibilities. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave those in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.